myself in the most surprising ways. Thank you.
above us with the stars. Some are near and some are far. They call to us for clarity. Some will know and then some will see. Today we are going to look at a marvelous place in Sri Lanka. This place is known as Sigiriya. There is nothing like this anywhere in the world, which is why it is known as the Eight Wonder of the World. This is actually a giant monolithic rock about 660 feet tall. And you can see that it has a flat top, like somebody cut it with a giant knife. There are incredible ruins at the top which are extremely mysterious. So let's go straight to the top and see what's up there. As you can see, there are a lot of strange brick structures here and there. And it is not only confusing for visitors, but even archaeologists are not able to make complete sense of what these structures were used for. They confirm that everything you see is at least 1,500 years old. But the mystery is not what these structures are. It is how these structures were built. How did ancient builders manage to move all these bricks to the top of the rock? It is reported that at least 3 million bricks are found here, but it would be impossible to make these bricks on top of the rock. There is not enough clay available here. They would have to have transported these bricks from the ground. Now, the really bizarre part is that there are no ancient stairs from the ground level which go to the top of the rock. Look, all these metal steps were built in the last century. Without these new stairs, it would be very hard to climb this rock. This whole rock is now set up with different type of stairs. This is the spiral stairs at a different level. The ancient builders built very limited stairs, but these stairs definitely did not reach the top. But to bring 3 million bricks from the ground level, you will definitely need proper stairs. Without this, it would be impossible to transport them to the top. There are not only bricks here, but look at these blocks. This is marble. The milky white marble stones are not native to this area at all. These blocks are actually very heavy. Each stone, which makes up a step, weighs about 50 pounds. And we can find thousands of these marble blocks here. Experts agree that marble is not naturally found anywhere nearby. So how were they transported up to a height of 660 feet, especially without stairs to climb? But it is not the bricks or the marble that really baffles me. 
it is the granite. Look at this large water tank. If you ignore the bricks and marble blocks around it, you understand that this is the largest monolithic tank in the world. It has not been built by adding stone blocks. It has been created by removing granite, by scooping out tons and tons of granite from solid rock. And exactly how many tons of rocks have been removed? This entire tank is 90 feet long and 68 feet wide and is about 7 feet deep. This means at least 3,500 tons of granite have been removed. So you can take a minute to really sit back and think if mainstream archaeologists are right. If human beings were using primitive tools like chisels, hammers, and pickaxes on granite, which is one of the hardest rocks in the world, removing 3,500 tons would have taken years. And how did these workers feed themselves during all these years if they don't even have stairs to go to the ground level? There is something fundamentally wrong with mainstream history books which talk about ancient people cutting rocks with chisels and hammers. But this is not just a theory. We have actual evidence in front of our eyes. Look here, we don't see individual chisel marks. We see long, snake-like, winding tool marks, which are continuous. This is not how primitive chiseling and wedge marks look. This tool mark reminds us of scooping ice cream out of a container. Ancient builders must have used a similar technology to scoop out granite like ice cream. And this tank has some strange properties. It does not need any human interference. No one is adding water to it or draining water out of this tank. Throughout the year, it will never completely dry up even during the super hot summers. And it will also not overflow during rainy season. This is really strange because Sri Lanka does have very hot summers and gets a lot of rain during the monsoon season as well. The tank appears to collect water through percolation and also seems to have a slow draining system underneath. There is another small rectangular tank which completely dries up during hot summers. Unlike this large monolithic tank, which always has fresh water. This is why locals refer to this huge tank as Ravana's swimming pool, because they believe it was built by Ravana. But I'm going to show you more evidence that ancient builders must have had some other technology or capability to accomplish these constructions. Look at the rock face here. You can clearly see the tool marks, large channel-like rectangular cuts, and various other markings. Archaeologists confirm that these were made during ancient times. But look around. Do you see any stairs or even a slope or a tree to stand on? How were these cuts made? if there's not even a place for human beings to stand. The hole, it has been clearly cut with advanced technology and goes deep inside the rock. These are not natural. Why were they created? In nine
Bricks are often made of shale, a lightweight rock that splits easily into thin layers. Quarry machines dig 40 centimeters down to expose the shale to the elements for two years. This weakens it, making it easier to process once it gets to the factory. A four-foot-high stone wheel with a steel tire grinds the shale into powder. It grinds up 50 tons of shale per hour. A screen sifts out any pieces that need more grinding. The powder goes to the pug mill, which mixes it with water. This makes a thick paste that will next go through the extrusion machine. The extruder forces the paste through a rectangular opening to form one long continuous piece called a slug. At the same time, it shaves off the crustier top layer to expose what will become the face of the brick. If this gray shale mixture is fired as is, it'll naturally produce a red brick. To engineer a different color, they coat the slug in sand mixed with an oxide mineral such as zinc or iron. Next, they texture the surface with a textured roller. This is just one of many popular designs. Then, a large knife comes down like a guillotine and slices the slug into five-foot lengths. You might be wondering where those three holes came from. Well, remember how the paste goes through the extruder to form the slug? Inside are three pins. They make three holes designed to decrease the brick's weight. Out of each five-foot length, they cut 23-inch bricks. The ones on the ends are uneven, so they go back into the mix to make new slugs. Next comes the delicate job of stacking these newly minted bricks-to-be. A machine first separates them. Then, using inflating bags, it grasps them, raises them, then stacks them. Meanwhile, the water in the bricks is starting to evaporate. To hasten that process, the bricks go into a dryer for two days. The dryer gets its hot air from the heat generated by the kiln, where the bricks go next for firing. The kiln is really a giant oven. It bakes the bricks at 1,040 degrees Celsius. That's almost 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Half days later, the bricks are ready. The transfer machine takes them out of the kiln.
saquinha no me hago. Oh, oh, oh. 